What is up guys, Digital VFX here once again, and today we have a tutorial on how to clean up a muddy mix. Now, as you can see, I have loaded up a project right here, and this happens to be the first song I ever released, DNH, which is on my SoundCloud, and I released it when I was very, very poor at mixing and mastering. I had a very loose concept um, of what those two uh, aspects of production were. And I didn't necessarily know how to mix. I was like 16 years old and many of you know exactly where I'm coming from. And some of you are actually there right now, which is why you're looking at this video. But essentially, I'm just going to be going through this track and kind of explaining uh, things that uh, I did wrong. And um, now that I have a, a better understanding of good production techniques, I can kind of steer this on the right path. So I'm just going to play the first section right here, just the kick intro and clean up a little bit of that. <laughs> All right, so let me just solo some stuff. I think there's way too much reverb on that clap. And that's because there is like four claps. Yeah, that's rough. All right, so I do have a lot of layers going on here. So we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So as you can see, there's kind of a long tails. So first thing I'm going to do is go in here and kind of shorten up some of the tails. All right, so that sounds a little bit better. Now I'm going to go do, as you can see, there's no EQs on these channels, which is a bad thing. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to EQ some of that. Automatically cut off all the lows, adjust the bandwidth a little bit. So a good way because I do have so many layers and I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting that many layers on just a clap intro like that. You generally need one or two, but because I do have that many, I'm not really focusing on the song. I'm just kind of focusing on the mastering. You, you kind of want to pick out different parts of each clap that you like the best. So in this clap in particular, I, or this might even be the snare. No, it is a clap. But in this clap, I kind of like the uh, the white noise-ish top end right there. So I'm going to boost that just slightly and lower the rest of the lows right there. And then I can move on to the next clap and listen to this one. Now I notice this clap has kind of a nice lower end than the other ones. Right that sound right there. You can kind of hear it. That's um, pretty much the base of the clap. Most of the fundamental frequencies are in this range right here. But because I did boost the highs, I shouldn't have the highs too high in this clap. Now, of course, that sounds kind of dull without the highs. But then again, we do have the highs from this clap. And together it sounds pretty good and now so i can throw in a snare here and again there's no eq because i didn't really understand what eqing was back when i was like 15 and 16 and making this song oh but that snare's not on this one throw another eq on and really eqs are all you need to get a basic mix down And just move on to the next one. And like I said, uh, just from the title of this video, this is going to be a rough mix. Um, this is something that you already have a bunch of layers as I do. And you kind of want to just make it 
a little better quality and it's like I said it's muddy So let's see what that sounds like together. Sorry, it sounds a lot better. Another thing you want to do when mixing is kind of utilize these panning. So since I do a four layers, you kind of want to give it some stereo separation and uh, make the stereo image a little bit wider. And so I'm just kind of kind of fade two actually that's yeah that'll be good now i have two claps on the right hand side and two claps on the left hand side i don't like to to pan hard right or left unless it's one channel that is specifically meant to be a left and right stereo channel and in that case you can pan one hard right hard left but um i traditionally like to go about halfway in between and less so Oops, got the wrong one. So now if you have uh, stereo speakers, you can hear that this snare is fading. And I don't really like that sound it's a little too heavy so i'm just going to leave it uh in the middle because it if i pan it to either side it kind of sounds like it's overweighing that side so i'm just going to keep this snare in the middle but the other ones are kind of accent snares and claps so i can leave those you know a little bit to the left of the stereo image or a little bit to the right but that already sounds a lot better for the intro so now but I did mute everything, so I can unmute that right now. All right, so now it's this Nexus channel, and I put on a Maximus and an Edison. Don't know why I put on an Edison, but I'll just keep it. Probably did it for some reason. But I remember back when I first got into FL, I did not know what Maximus was, and I did not know that there was a, whoops, didn't mean to change that to an Edison. Let's see, replace Maximus. I did not know that Maximus started off automatically trying to correct your songs. So uh, the good thing to know with Maximus is always go to presets and default, and that will set everything to zero and it will not automatically alter your sound. And I didn't know that at first, so chances are there are other people that did not know that, but it generally isn't a good thing to have your song already being tried to fix for you by a computer you want to fix it um, to how you want it to sound so always set that to default and yeah another mistake that i used to always do which is very important is a lot of vsts have a, a built-in effects region all right so it's this nexus so as you can see, uh, Nexus doesn't have too many, but they have a filter, delay, and a reverb. And what I used to do a lot would be automatically go to the mixer in FL and add a reverb. But it's very bad to have a reverb on the plugin working as well as a reverb in the mixer. And that was one thing that I didn't really pay attention to. I didn't really think about it, but just make sure that you only want to have one reverb running on your VST, whether it be in the VST or on the mixer, but you never want to have both of them. So I can definitely turn that down a little bit. It's actually the delay too. I'm not too fond of the sound, but like I said, it's not going to be part of this song that I'm worried about. It's just going to be the mixing. So that already sounds a lot better. But again, as you can notice, there's no EQ. So actually, I'm just going to take off that Maximus and turn it into an EQ. Oops, not that. Uh, replace and parametric EQ. 
that uh that riser was because that sounded like it had two reverbs on it or at least too much of a reverb there it is it's just wasp yeah it is a huge reverb on there that in there and again as you can notice no eqs do not follow my production style when i was this young you will not get anywhere <laughs> i actually want to take out that whole fundamental tone right there because i don't really want the the upriser to be a, a predominant sound i just want it to be like a background accent that lifts up everything else so i'm going to leave out that fundamental tone i'll play it once again you can kind of see those thick lines and that's the fundamental tone and then in different intervals of frequencies those are all the harmonics so yeah i'm going to try to take out that fundamental so yeah that sounds a lot better and that pre to snare sounded like crap kind of I don't know which one it was. I do have it in here. Perfect. And oh, the infamous sound goodieser. Yeah, let's take that out. I mean, I guess sound goodieser goodieser is good in a pinch if you aren't too skilled in production and don't have too many plugins that kind of uh, give it that extra depth or, or fatness to the sound, but it really isn't too great of a plug-in, especially just because there's only four knobs and a volume knob. I think it's just a dry wet for how much this uh, signal's affected. But um, if you didn't know, Maximus is actually the exact same uh, engine that Sound Goodies are uses. So if you go to presets. Um, down here they have sound goodieser presets A, B, and C, D, which if you go to sound goodieser, uh, replace, there's A, B, and C, D, and they're all just presets and those are the only knobs for this plugin. So, um, this is just a basic one if you want, uh, kind of a little more fatness to your sound, but I would definitely not abuse it, but if you want to use more of a multi-band compressor, then... Maximus has the exact same parameters in there so you could go to sound goodies or preset a and you can go and individually um, manipulate each frequency range so you have a little bit more control than sound goodies are but I don't use either of those as much as I used to but they are good when used properly and um, you don't use it to kind of overpower the sound because it is very easy to do that with those two plugins so replace and none i'm gonna link this clap shot to a new channel just so i can put another eq on that eqs are going to be your best friend when cleaning up mixes because uh the main thing that makes mixes super muddy is that they uh have a bunch of frequencies in the same range and they're all just overlapping each other and really mastering a song and, and mixing and this is more so mixer mixing excuse me but um it's pretty much just putting together a puzzle and making sure all your different layers fit together without overlapping too much I 
So now let's see this build. Yeah, did you see how much that kind of <laughs> I added both sound goodies there and Maximus. Yeah, that's that's a no-no. Uh replace another EQ. sounded a lot better than the original actually was but whatevs this kick is too strong <laughs> actually pretty cool because it had the uh the delay that i made when i made the reverse effect and it kind of comes in on both ears so yeah so that that doesn't sound horrible these two leads probably need eqing as <laughs> on that kick that kicks way too powerful but i'm gonna guess that there's maximus in sound goodies there oh just maximus place that i'm not gonna really worry too much about compression and everything because that kind of goes more into the mastering part and this is really gonna be on cleaning up a rough mix but i will definitely do a mastering tutorial at some point once i get good at it enough that I feel comfortable uh, telling people how to do it because I don't like to spread wrong information. Oh, that's just one. I don't ever like to use one because it's not a fully parametric EQ. It's just um, a graphic. It says parametric and it actually by definition it is, but I don't like the graphic uh, layout where I can't see the frequencies. So this is kind of a traditional EQ that you might see on a mixing console, but not traditionally one you'll see in DAWs. A lot of DAWs are using this style of EQ now. Um, this is what I want to do. Oh, that's the kick, actually. Let me go back to the lead. Right there. Parametric EQ. <laughs> That delay either. That's off. Where's the other delay?
drop is the worst part, but that's not too bad. So what? We just have those two kicks. So again, this is a good point to bring up. If you're doing layered kicks, as you can see, I pretty much just threw a Maximus on because I switched this back to an EQ, but I had two Maximuses on two different kicks and one I guess was supposed to be a top kick. I guess I just like the sound of both of them. I don't know for sure what I can say um, about what I did back when I made this song, but I'm assuming I wanted the effect of like a top kick and a bass kick. And to do that, as you can see, I have this kick with most of the bass EQ'd, but I kind of like the top part of this kick and it was meant to be an accent since I had this about half volume. So I'm just going to go to the EQ and cut off all the bass and raise the uh, the mid frequencies a little bit. And just kind of cut off all the bass so they're not overlapping. That was that was part of the reason to the muddiness and one of the biggest things to the muddiest muddiness in this track was all the maximuses that were just kind of thrown on and they were automatically in fl sense uh amplifying or enhancing the sound which if you do that to every single track obviously it adds up and it starts to sound like crap so let's go on to this i guess i can do this individually Yep, here's what I just mentioned. There's a reverb on there and a reverb on Nexus. So that's why I was hearing so much reverb. All right. Oh, I don't want any pre-delay. So that sounds like a good enough reverb. Again with the Maximus. take off some of that oh, was that the same reverb no I need to go to that different pattern yep there's reverb and delay that song need a little bit more in the high end so I just threw that one little accent up an octave and now So what I'm going to do now is also get one of these kicks and I'm going to side chain it to this bass, which are these two, which also both have Maximus. Actually, they have gross speed on, so I guess gross speed isn't great for side chaining because it doesn't actually um, map the side chain pattern to the waveform of the kick, but I guess I'm not really going to worry about it too much now. I'm just going to take off that Maximus and add in an EQ. Why did I do that? There we go.
So it was pretty much a combination of those two bases with having their fundamental tones right next to each other there and all the Maximus is just thrown on there and the kicks in the same region and it was just not a good combination there. So let's, uh, let's hear this after all that. Pretty reverb. Get down a little bit. Of course I added a Maximus. Surprise, surprise. Those don't really sound like great effects, but I'll live with them. It's pretty much this, it sounds... hear it after all that fix so I guess I'll just give it one through playthrough real quick um, I guess maybe in the end I can do I didn't really do a before and after but what I can do actually is save this file as a new file, um, like DNH2, and then I can export the before and after just so you can hear what uh, basic EQs. And I didn't really do too much of the panning except for those claps, but when you're doing a full mix and finally sitting down and mix, mixing all your finished tracks, you definitely want to utilize panning. And not necessarily for everything, but especially for percussion, so everything's not hitting dead center. And even if... Um, it's very slightly like this much left or this much right. It's still um, slight stereo separation. So for someone listening with monitors or for listening in like good stereo headphones, you can they'll definitely be able to hear all those accents. And it's traditionally meant to simulate like a drum set when someone will be doing like a fill. A lot of recording engineers will actually pan that fill from left to right as the drummer would be playing it from left to right on on his snares and then his toms and then so forth. So yeah, I'm just going to give this a run through and then I will export this and the before file and then we can kind of see a comp comparison and obviously this one's going to be a lot cleaner. And it's still not going to be perfect, but, you know, just running through all your different uh, layers and all your different plugins and just kind of making sure you don't have reverbs overlapping, make sure that uh, you don't have two kicks that are both like pounding in the same frequencies and, you know, just like the bases that I cleaned up. But this should be a pretty good rough mix or at least a start to clean up uh, your rough mix.
right, so yeah, that is the finished um, product of me just cleaning that file up, but I hope this video helped. I know it was a longer one, and some of you like shorter videos, some of you wish I had longer videos, but um, this one wasn't as bad considering I talked uh, through a lot of it um, when most of my longer videos happen to be uh, my studio sessions or just when I'm working on music, so I hope this was what some of you were looking for, and... Yeah, uh, remember to comment, rate, subscribe. If I missed anything, if you have any questions, concerns, throw them down in the comment section below. And this has been a Digital VFX production. See you in the next one.